What's happened, YouTube? Back of the day, Gamer here. Thanks for tuning into my channel, and today I'm coming at you with my favorite type of video pickups. That's right, I haven't done one of these in a while because I've been integrating my pickup videos into my What's Happening YouTube videos. But uh, I like doing pickup videos. This is my channel, so I'm gonna do whatever the hell I want. Hopefully, that's what you want too. That's why you tuned in, right? Well, as you can tell, I'm coming at you in this video from the middle of, not the middle, the aftermath of the blizzard. Yeah, we got 12 inches of snow last night. That's what she said, that's a lot of snow. So I figured, hey, let's go sit out in it and film a video, right? Right, so let's see what we got in our bag of fun over here. My Castlevania backpack. <laughs> okay, well, it's not a surprise unboxing. I know what it is, because I bought this stuff. Uh, let's start off with, we're not going to get any gameplay from these two, but I got a couple of Xbox games. I really should plug in my Xbox. I probably got a dozen games I haven't played in a while, played since I got them. But, uh, I got The Hobbit. I never played this game. I don't know why. I like Lord of the Rings and whatnot. Graphics looks cool. I'm pretty sure this is right up my alley, but I don't know why. Never had it. Now I do. Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown. Now, man, something's wrong with my eye. Oh, there we go, that feels good. This is a game that I wanted for a long time. I bought it like two years ago, and it wouldn't work. I took it back to the store, had them clean it, brought it back home, still wouldn't work. I said, to hell with it, I'm just buying it again. So, two Xbox titles, Hobbit and Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown. I heard this one wasn't that good, but I don't care. I really like the way it looks, and I look forward to playing it. Um, I've been listening to a lot more music lately. Obviously, back in the day, Gamer is a big 80s rock hair metal fan. And I picked me up a Europe, the final countdown uh, from, yeah. Uh, they don't have a lot of great songs, but the final countdown is kick ass. So I felt like I had to have it. And what f uh, files right into suit with a lot of things is... I already had it, so now I have two Europe The Final Countdown CDs. If anybody wants one of these, tell me. I'll send it to you. So, yeah, it's obviously, as you can tell, spelled wrong. Is it Combat Tribes? Is it Combat Ribes? Pretty sure it's supposed to be Combat Tribes, but uh, you're looking at it, so you know what I'm talking about. Intro, pretty kick-ass. Statue of Liberty, Twin Towers, Ground Zero, New York, the center for all evil. <laughs> They're really setting us up for quite a story there. Well, the reason I decided to pick this one up because I actually thought it was a port of another game I'd played back in the day and on our first trip to the Galloping Ghost, but that game is called Prime Fighters, not Comma Tribes. What makes that kind of special is not the game, but the actual marquee. I'll try and remember to throw that in here, but if I didn't, trust me, it's funny. If I did, you can see how funny it is. Anyways, as you can see, this is a beat-em-up. It's a typical button masher with shitty knockback. And there's spots where you get pinned, or an enemy will have like a weapon, and you're just unable to get at them, and it just wastes your continues. So there's no jump in this game, which is an exceptionally asinine thing to do in a beat-em-up. No jump kick? But the game's saving grace, if it has one, is that it's pretty adult themed. There's drop kicking and ground and pound moves while the enemies are down. Also the cutscenes have you interrogating enemies, which is kind of adult as well. The one thing I really like about this game though is some of the special moves which are fortunately automatic. You don't need to learn any combos or have the manual, but like the bashing two enemies heads together or swinging them by their feet, that's great. So I don't like to be negative, but you could just feel free to pass right over this one. It wasn't anything special. Okay, next up we've got 
RPM Racing or Radical Psycho Machine Racing. Awesome name. You know how sometimes you have a game and it's just like, yeah! That is not this game. I'm just going to put that right back in the bag and that's all we're going to say about it. Uh, we've got some, good luck, four more Genesis titles. Four Genesis titles here in the bag. So we got uh, Batman Returns. Now, I really like this for Nintendo and Super Nintendo. It's not the same game on Genesis. And I actually picked this one up because I saw Elfin Nerd do a video saying how good it was, except he was talking about the other Batman game on Genesis. This game isn't terrible, but it's not great. I really like the visuals, but the gameplay has much to be desired. Again, it uh, there's some um, isometric view levels that were a little tough and I mean, the game itself was just not that spectacular. If it would have just been a port of either the Nintendo or Super Nintendo version of Batman Returns, it would have been a lot better in my opinion. But it definitely could be worse. Uh, yeah, stick with stick with the other Batman game, the good one, the one that costs a lot more. We got Boxing Legends of the Ring. This game sucks. For being called Legends of the Ring, there's only like eight legends to choose from, and half of them are barely famous, yet alone legends. I like the graphic style, but it plays like shit. It's slow to respond, and that is a terrible trait for a boxing game. To top it off, there's one part where you can choose zero players and just watch the fights. You can even choose not to watch the fights. So here's what happens between Battle of the Legends when you opt not to watch the fights. Who thought that would be fun? Who was like, yeah, let's do that. Let's put that in here. This piece of shit is going right back to the store. I'll be better off trading it for a third copy of RPM Racing. Because earlier I forgot to mention that just like Europe, the final countdown, I already owned RPM Racing. So I've got two Europe final countdowns and two RPM Racings. Anybody wants that? Let me know. I'll send them that one too. All right, we got left. Oh, okay. All right. So a long time ago, I was at a convention and I bought this game. I bought the box. I didn't know the fucking game wasn't in it. So it's been on the shelf for several years. I figured I'd run across it. Never have, because this game is super obscure. I've never seen it, never heard of it. And we're going to get into it now, but that is Saint Sword for the Genesis. Now, we got to look at this box art, because it is pretty weird, unique, and cool. And it kind of fits right into the theme, because this is just a weird fucking game. First off, have you ever heard of it? Yeah, no, me neither. This game has a lot of potential. The graphics are okay. The music so far is okay. You have a sword, which is always good. But the controls suck. They're super stiff, which obviously ruins it. But the shit sandwich doesn't stop there. Oh no! It's one of those platformers that isn't linear. You have to find your way around. Which, okay, hey, no big deal. I can, you know, I can handle that. But to make it worse, there's a time limit. And to top that shit sandwich off it's one of those games where you're supposed to fall down pits in 99 percent of all video game pits are a bad thing that's because falling down shit is never good you ever hear any good stories about people falling down wells no because it's bad oh no but not in saint sword you have to fall down everything just to get where you're supposed to go it's not all bad. I do, however, like the enemies. They're mostly super weird and unique. The first boss really reminds me of something from Asti Annex. I want to like this game, but unfortunately, the controls really ruin it for me. Like I said before, I don't want to be negative, but you could never play this game and be just fine. All right, we got one left. And this is, uh, yeah, this is the gem of the lot for sure. My old favorite game store that closed, reopened, and uh, I went there. The guy, you know, doesn't really have any games, so I purged my, uh, what was it, my Genesis collection. 
I purged all this shit I don't want anymore and took it over there so he'd have a lot of games to sell. And he gave me a pretty penny because he was happy to get the games. He had this one sitting there. I never buy Genesis games loose, but Shining Force 2. And he had it for 40 bucks. I think it's going for 60 on eBay. So even though the label is not in the best condition and it doesn't have the cartridge, Shining Force 2. Now, right when the pandemic started, I was like, you know what? If we, I'm, we don't have work, I'm gonna start an RPG. Jumped into Shining Force, loved it, game was awesome. I only hear better things about Shining Force 2, so we're gonna get into that. But that's all that's into this bag. So now we're gonna get into the house because it's no joke. There's a foot of snow, it's snowing some more, and I'm only wearing my thin ass in case you didn't notice, want to point this out. Rad shirt. That's right, rad. So, um, if you don't know about rad, you just better better YouTube the movie and watch it right now because it's rad. <laughs> so that's it, folks. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, YouTube, keep it retro. Ass is freezing. Ugh.